Either you stand with the forces of freedom, or you're in league with Maduro and his mayhem. Will we stand with the Syrian people, or with their oppressors? The former Maduro regime has oppressed its people for years. The repressive regime of Bashar al-Assad. The tyranny of the now defunct Maduro regime. The Assad regime, its brutality and repression. Active threat to the entire region. Growing threat to regional peace and security. It is time for Maduro to go. It's time for Assad to get out of the way. Well, we're looking at Venezuela. It's a very sad situation. Uh, that was the richest state in all of that area. That's a big, beautiful area, and by far the richest. And now it's uh, one of the poorest places in the world. That's what socialism gets you, when they want to raise your taxes to 70 percent. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I've been watching our opponents, our future opponents, talking about 70 percent. Number one, they can't do it for 70 percent. It's got to be probably twice that number. But Maybe more importantly, what happens is you really have to study and take a look at what's happened to Venezuela. It is a very, very sad situation. So we have our eye very closely on Venezuela, very close. I'm Mike Pence, the Vice President of the United States. And on behalf of President Donald Trump and all the American people, let me express the unwavering support of the United States as you, the people of Venezuela, raise your voices in a call for freedom. Nicolas Maduro is a dictator with no legitimate claim to power. Al Canciller de la República, que iniciemos una revisión total, absoluta, de las relaciones con el gobierno de los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica y en las próximas horas tomemos decisiones de carácter político, diplomático, en defensa de la soberanía nacional, en defensa de la constitución, en defensa de la democracia venezolana. As you make your voices heard tomorrow, we will stay with you until democracy is restored and you reclaim your birthright of libertad. Muchas gracias y vayan con Dios. Are their lives in danger? Is this a, a, a powder keg to the Heritage Foundation's Anna Quintana on all of this? Uh, what do you think, Anna? Was it a wise move that they, we recommend they stay there, don't go anywhere, because we don't recognize what uh, President Maduro is saying and threatening? I think it's an incredibly wise and justified move to have done the opposite, to have recognized what Maduro is saying is to recognize him as the legitimate leader. And frankly, Maduro would have to be absolutely suicidal to even harm a hair on the head of a U.S. diplomat's head. I mean, we've seen how the Trump administration responded to the diplomatic attacks in Cuba, how he drew down our embassy, and how he responded very strongly against the Cuban government. Now look at the situation in Venezuela and how the Trump administration has been responding over the last two years, Maduro would have to be suicidal. Yeah, no, I hear you on that, but I've seen equally suicidal or foolish leaders. I tell the committee comes to mind in Iran. I'm old enough to remember when he, you know, gave his blessings to the capture of those 400 plus largely American hostages at the time. We thought it was outlandish. I think that would be quickly resolved. Um, you know, it, it took a year and a half. So what are we looking at here? How bad is this going to get? 
I, I hear you, but one thing we have to recognize is that the size, the scale, and the widespread demonstrations in Venezuela are absolutely unprecedented, right? right? The domestic pressure, that's something you've never seen in the 20 years of the socialists uh, governing the country. You also haven't seen the amount of international pressure of the countries that are no longer just not recognizing Maduro, because that's a list of over 50 countries, but now you have about 15 countries in the Western Hemisphere and in Europe and as well as Albania and Kosovo not recognized and recognizing uh, President Guaido. I mean, that. Before this video begins, let me just make one thing clear, because I know that if I don't say this, people are going to accuse me of this. This video is not meant to defend the Maduro regime. The purpose of this video is merely to debunk some common claims that are circulating on social media regarding Venezuela. I am not denying that the Maduro regime has done things that are not kosher. There's plenty you can criticize the Maduro regime on. However, I care about honesty and integrity, and one thing that really grinds my gears is when people abuse a situation where people are suffering to score political points online. And even worse, some people, like Joanna Hausman, have motivations to lie about this situation for reasons that will become apparent later on in this video. Venezuela. A lot of people are talking about the complicated situation in my home country, and there is a lot of misinformation. So I did a bunch of research to explain in the clearest way possible what is going on in a way that I hope people can understand, because goddamn doesn't matter right now. Joanna Hausman is not exactly a trustworthy journalist. Why? Well, before she made this video that's now gone viral, she made another video where she claimed this. The man who rallied behind the poor, the man who said being rich was bad, moved $4.2 billion offshore to his daughter's bank account, making her the thing he supposedly hated the most, rich. That's a pretty serious claim. I mean, according to her, the daughter of Chavez was made the richest woman in Venezuela. That's a pretty outlandish claim, right? Surely you should have something to back it up. Well, no. You see, the only evidence provided for this claim whatsoever, to my knowledge, is this receipt. And as you can tell, it doesn't even show the correct number that is claimed. This is nowhere near the number of 4.2 billion. Nor can this receipt in any way be verified in of itself. Already now, it should be pretty clear to anyone who's rational that Joanna Hausman is not exactly a trustworthy journalist. Or at least she's pretty shit at her job. Let's begin with some important bullet points. One, what is happening in Venezuela is not a US-backed coup. Well, setting aside that we have sources of politicians essentially admitting that they are manipulating Venezuela, Let's not forget that back in 2002, the U.S. was at least partially responsible for the attempted coup against the Chavez government. Elliot Abrams is the special envoy to Venezuela. He's very much responsible for the assistance of the Contra in Nicaragua. In Guatemala, he also assisted the dictatorship. Also, are we just gonna forget about the recent slip-up by John Bolton, where he held the notepad the wrong way? and exposed plans of sending 5,000 troops. Let me ask you something. Why wouldn't you suspect that what's happening in Venezuela is at least partially a US-backed coup? Who is the interim president Juan Guaido? Juan Guaido is not a right-wing politician, but the son of a taxi driver and a liberal representative in Congress. Guaido was elected by the Venezuelan people to be a representative in Venezuela's National Assembly. He is acting as interim president, as in temporary president, until democratic elections can be ensured. All right, so when it comes to Juan Guaido, he's definitely not what he seems. He may seem like a moderate politician who wants to preserve the welfare of Venezuela, but when you actually look into his plans, it's quite the opposite. 
There's evidence to show that he wants to mass privatize Venezuela if he ever gets into power. Oh, and by the way, he was a member of right-wing youth groups like Yavu. They, by the way, is implicated in taking money from the US for political activities in Venezuela. He also has clear personal connections to a lot of people who have been elemental to the two coup attempts against the Chavez government. Why is President Nicolás Maduro illegitimate? Now this may take a little bit longer because there's a lot, but let's speed this thing up and start in 2017. In 2017, the Supreme Court that was handpicked by Nicolás Maduro's party nullified and stripped the National Assembly or Congress of their powers. The National Assembly was chosen by vote and was the only government institution that was run by an opposition majority. What you described, Joanna, started because the assembly seated three deputies that had been accused of fraud. Then it is expected that the court will hold the assembly to account. When the opposition in Venezuela then reacted to this and declared their mistrust, Maduro called for a national election. However, there's one very important detail that Joanna never mentions, nor does anyone else who mentions the same talking points regarding Venezuela right now. These elections that were called out were boycotted by the opposition. Yes, the opposition boycotted the elections. Don't you think that's something that's kind of important to mention in all of this? Imagine when the Democrats took the House, if Trump was like, no, I don't like this anymore. The House is no longer a legitimate part of government. And here's another House that I made up with everyone that agrees with me. Americans would be furious. So too are Venezuelans. Venezuela erupted in protests. Hundreds of protesters, most of them teenagers, were detained, some of whom were tortured and murdered. Meanwhile, despite these protests, Maduro made his own Congress that he could control, just like that. Fast forward to May 20th, 2018, where this illegitimate Congress calls for presidential elections. Now, during these elections, the most popular opposition candidates are either jailed, exiled, or banned from running. In other words, there is no legitimate way for the opposition to run. Yes, that's true. A large part of the opposition has indeed been jailed. But let me ask you something. If you are in a position of government, if you held the power of a nation, and you had been democratically elected into that position, and you had your opposition continue to try and have a coup against you, and sabotage the democratic process in other ways as well. And not only that, but that they also had connections to a foreign nation, and that there was evidence that they were continuously plotting against you. Would you, in that position, just sit by and let them roll all over you? Roll over the democratic process of your nation? I hope to God that the answer you would come up with would be no. Because that would be a betrayal against the people who have elected you. And even more deeply, it would be a betrayal against the very constitution upon the Bolivarian government of Venezuela is founded upon. Like I stated before in this video, I'm not defending the Maduro government. But honestly, do you expect the Maduro government to do nothing, considering the recent history of coups? And sabotage? Oh, and I still haven't mentioned the many assassination attempts. Yes. Do you get the point now? So the sham presidential elections are held anyway by Maduro's government, where only 20% of the population voted. However, a lot of the 20% were public employees who were intimidated into voting by threats from the government. These were called illegitimate elections, not just by the Venezuelan people, but by the international community. Oh, fuck off, Joanna. Multiple organizations have looked into the elections of Venezuela and they have found no foul play. The government in Venezuela has been democratically elected by its people. And this fact is backed up by multiple neutral parties investigating all these elections. This is not even very hard to find out. A simple Google search will find this. Democracy seems to be alive and well in Venezuela. The elections were overseen by 115 independent observers, Joanna. Maduro took the minimum wage from $350 a month to $7 a month. Meanwhile, inflation hit 1.7 million percent in 2018, with the IMF projecting 10 million percent in 2019. So the daily minimum wage can't buy two eggs. Mm. I'm not going to deny that the economic crisis in Venezuela is bad. And yet, if people only could eat two eggs per day in Venezuela, 
you would have a mass starvation rivaling the one going on in Yemen right now. This isn't even up for debate. This is basic biochemistry. There is a certain amount of caloric intake that a human being must have every day. If they do not get this caloric intake, they starve. Period. I mean, fucking hell, this is dumb. There is such a shortage of medical supplies that people are dying from previously eradicated diseases like polio because there aren't any vaccines. Oh, fuck you, bitch. Seriously, fuck you. I have just exposed you as a fucking lying hypocrite. Or at the very least, a drooling retard who doesn't know how to do basic fucking research. Or provide sources. People like you fucking disgust me, to be honest. Who is Joanna Hausman, really? Well, I can tell you who her father is. His name is Ricardo Hausman. He's at Harvard University as the head of the Center for International Development. During the Caldera administration, he was also the state minister of Venezuela. At the IMF, he was also a chairman. And looking at some articles, it becomes pretty clear that he has a fucking bias regarding Venezuela. And he's your dad, Joanna. Considering the lies you've been telling during your entire video, plus the history of your father as well as his activism against Venezuela, I don't think it's so much of taking a pinch of salt regarding anything you say, but rather taking as much as a fucking fist. No one should take you seriously. So what is happening now? Interim President Juan Guaido has been backed by the international community. Yes, this includes the United States, but do you know who else backs Juan Guaido that isn't Trump? Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Germany, the Socialist Party that runs Albania, Canada's progressive prince, Justin Trudeau, Australia, Paraguay, Peru, the government run by the Socialist Party of Spain, whose president said what is going on in Venezuela is the opposite of socialism. The list goes on. So that was a lot of information and I am exhausted and I'm not exhausted because I had to explain this to you, but I'm exhausted because the situation in Venezuela has been talked about in the forms of political ideologies and politicians and uh, political leanings. And it's, it's the conversation has completely strayed away from what actually matters, which is the Venezuelan people. On a personal level, my immediate family, my father is exiled from back home. My extended family, they go out on these protests. My uncle is in jail for being a journalist that tried to shed light on what was going on. My cousin had to leave Venezuela because they were after him as well. This has affected everybody on a human level. And it doesn't matter what leanings you have in an ideological political standpoint. This is about people. This is about people wanting their country back. That's it. And if you have any more questions, ask a Venezuelan and they can tell you from their personal human level how it's affected them. Please listen. perspective, uh, he has lost legitimacy. He has failed to deliver on the promises he's made. 
In its role as the only legitimate branch of government duly elected by the Venezuelan people, the National Assembly invoked the country's constitution to declare Nicolas Maduro illegitimate, and the office of the presidency therefore vacant. I'm gonna be loud, President Trump's gonna be loud, the United States is gonna be loud, and Maduro will hear us because we won't stop talking until we see Maduro go. We'll keep increasing sanctions to cut off the regime from the money it needs to survive. We're going to announce sanctions against Petroleus de Venezuela, Sociedad Anima, or PDVSA, as it's known by its Spanish acronym, the state-owned oil monopoly. As Venezuelan soldiers, we're making a request to the U.S., he says, to support us in logistical terms, with communication, with weapons, so we can realize Venezuelan freedom. What uh, really we need uh, is uh, ammunition and uh, anti-tank and anti-aircraft missiles. All options are on the table. Does that mean you're considering those? Which is military? all options, always. All options are on the table. We will stop looking to topple regimes and overthrow governments, folks.